All right, welcome everybody. It's Cam from the Santa Sellers Houses team. Thank you for joining me tonight on our live webinar, Why You Should Buy Before Spring and How to Win. Um, we are live tonight. Um, I'm hoping that if you have any questions, you will type them in the chat box. I'm just gonna highlight that right now. I promise to get to all questions at the end of the webinar. So it, throughout, as we're going along, if you have questions, just type them into the chat box there and uh, I'll make sure that we get to them, all right? Let's get started. Where am I? Perfect. So today, what are we gonna talk about? First of all, you're here because you wanna buy a house this year. You know you're gonna be competing because everyone is competing against other buyers right now and you wanna win. You don't wanna lose offers over and over again and you want our secret sauce on how we're gonna help you win. So to start, we're gonna recap the entire market starting from last year up until about now so that we can understand where we're at and where we think we're gonna go, all right? Talk about the typical buying process versus what a multiple offer scenario is and what you should expect going forward if you are gonna be participating in the real estate market in London this year. We're also gonna get into our three best strategies to help you win. Uh, these are strategies that I use with my clients on a day-to-day -day basis that have proven to be successful and I wanna share them with you so that you can use them this year to get into the right house. Also, we're gonna talk about Lacorum Rewards at the end of the webinar. I'm gonna be giving away a $50 credit um, to shoplacorum.ca. Uh, so we'll talk about that at the end. And of course, we'll obviously cover all Q and A's that we've got as well. So what happened in 2020? All right, obviously COVID hit, the world turned upside down and the real estate market will never be the same because of it. Well, maybe 20 years down the road, who knows? Uh, we started out hot. Last January, prices were surging. CMHC had given out a prediction that last year, the average sale price in London might hit 450, which seems crazy considering where we're at right now. They thought we might get to 450. The average sale price last January was 442. So we were starting out hot and we were hot on the tail of their prediction. Then obviously the pandemic hit and in March, things started to peel back. April was very slow. We saw a 7% price drawback from, or in April compared to where we were at, and people were scared. They didn't know what was going to happen. They, they didn't want to interact in the market if they didn't have to. Um, so we saw very low listings and very, uh, very low sale numbers for April, um, which typically is one of the most active months in the whole year. Spring market was pushed later into the year, um, starting off in June, July, and August, which were just absolutely on fire. A lot of this was fueled by people leaving big cities. Uh, I know everyone's heard about people leaving Toronto. They want to get out of condos. They want more space. They think they're going to work from home forever. Maybe they're going to commute or retire. They're moving here. They're selling there. They're moving here. They're pocketing a lot of money and uh, they're spending it here. These graphs give us a really good idea of what we were experiencing last year. On the left is a, is a bar chart that shows the average sale price in London by month. You can see April there took a little bit of a dip, but from there, it just kept increasing. And a lot of that has to do with the graph on the right, which is number of new listings. Okay. April, once again, very slow, not a lot of stuff happening in the market last year in April. However, we get to June, people are confident in what's going to happen. They see that the world is not ending. People can still buy houses. We saw a ton of new listings kind of market in June. So that spring market just pushed later, but from there, prices started to, or sorry, listings started to decline. And when listings go down, supply goes down and demand goes up or stays the same, prices go up. Okay. So that's, we see those two are kind of inversions of each other. And that really tells us the story of what was happening. Um, and interestingly, December there at the end of the year, really low inventory, which brings me to my next point. Sales to new listings ratio. What is that? It's basically telling us how many sales are there for every new listing, okay? Um, the red bar that goes across the middle of the graph there, that is 100%, meaning for every one new listing, we've got one sale, one to one swap, okay? When we are above 80% sales to new listings ratio, we're in a seller's market. As you can see in November and December there, 11 and 12 on that graph, we were above 100%, meaning for every new listing, more than one house was being sold. Hyper or extreme seller's market. That is where we were at to end last year, okay? So what do we expect in 2021? We know where we ended off last year and why things were happening the way that we, they were. 
So what do we expect? Like I said, an extreme seller's market. There's a ton of demand, very low supply. Okay. We're seeing a ton of demand in the market. A lot of it's fueled by low interest rates. They're rock bottom right now. The Bank of Canada is saying that low interest rates are going to stay until 2023. So people have confidence in buying right now. Once again, a lot of out of town demand. Every weekend I'm out with clients and I'm seeing agents and buyers from out of town. They always look at their bumper, uh, their bumper plates or their, their license plates. They always say they're from Toronto area. They're coming, they're buying real estate here. We also have a lot of new build uncertainty. Builders are having difficulty pricing because building materials are going up. They also are experiencing a lot of delays. So they can't guarantee that a house will be built at a certain time. So that last year was a large chunk of inventory. A lot of new build sales happening last year. Very, very few sales in the new build industry right now because there's no inventory and they can't commit to pricing, okay? Now we're in February, we're almost done the first week of February, so we can easily take a look back at what happened in January to understand kind of what's happening so far in 2021. I know that L-Star released stats earlier this week, the average sale price for the L-Star area, London, St. Thomas, and around a little over 600. This tells us exactly what happened in London specifically last month. New listings, 496, that's down 18% from 2020. Sales, 387, that's up 5% from 2020. So we got listings down, sales up, okay? Brings our average price to just over $615,000 within the city of London. That is up 39% from 2020, which was at 441 or 442, which is what I said earlier. 39% in one year for the month of January. Nuts, it's on fire. Remax and all the big brokerages do predictions at the start of the year um, to kind of predict where they think the real estate market's gonna go. These are always very conservative. You know, they usually say we're gonna see price increase between two to 5%. And in reality, we've been seeing price increases anywhere from 12 to 20% in a year. Remax this year got bold. They said we we're gonna go up 10%. Well, we're up 40% from where we were at last year. Uh, do we think we're gonna beat that 10% by the end of the year? I would say confidently, yes, we are, all right? That's the main statistic I wanna pull from there. Some examples from properties that have sold uh, in the past month, okay? I had offers submitted on behalf of clients on all of these properties. 65 Weston Street, 19 offers, sold 110K over list price. 44 Dalhousie, 15 offers, 131K over list price. 26 Cronin, 37 offers, 128K over list price. These are but a few examples of properties that are receiving 10 to 50 offers and selling for 100K or more over list price. I think the most I've seen over list price, uh, 221K. House on Duchess, just around the corner from me, 221K over list price. Craziness, all right? This is what to expect if you're going to be getting into the market right now, okay? Make no bones about it. You are competing. So why you need to buy before spring? We've talked about this. Prices are going up by the week, by the week, almost 10K. All right. That's what it feels like when we're out there. Money is cheap. Rock bottom interest rates, 1.7% on a five-year fixed rate on a, on a um, insured mortgage. That's crazy. And like I said, crazy competition. We're experiencing it now and we're going to continue experiencing it probably into the summer and beyond. Okay. Two of those things we can't control. Price is going up. I can't decide who's gonna, what somebody else is gonna pay for something else. Money being cheap, no control over that. What I can control is preparing you to compete with other home buyers, making sure that you're prepared in the best position possible to make a very strong offer and kick everyone else's ass when we're competing for a property that you want, okay? We're gonna fly through some of these. What is a multiple offer scenario? Simply put, it's when more than one offer is registered on a single listing at one time. Often it's set up on purpose by the listing agent. Right now we know that we have really uneven levels of supply and demand. Okay. So there's going to be multiple offers on everything, no matter what. But right now what we're seeing for the most part is a planned multiple offer scenario by the listing agent. Understand that the listing agent and the seller want the most money for the house. That's their job. Okay. So they're not thinking about you, the home buyer, and trying to get you a deal. That's my job, okay? This flow chart gives us a really good idea of what a traditional versus multiple offer scenario looks like. 
At the top, uh, you can see you make an offer anytime. All right, there's no specific instructions. At the bottom, in a multiple offer scenario, very typical right now, you're told exactly when and how to make an offer. Every listing agent is gonna have a different process that they go through, um, but it's to generate the highest sale price for their clients, all right? Now, why you want your own buyer's agent? Why would you want somebody that's gonna represent you as opposed to going directly to the listing agent? Number one, I'm dedicated to you as the buyer. That's my job, okay? I represent you, your interests. I don't care about the seller. I don't care about the other buyers. My job is to focus on you and your needs. Number two, understanding your goals. We absolutely have to have a very good understanding of what you're trying to accomplish with this property. How long are you gonna own it? What's the purpose? Is it an investment? Is it for your family? Are you handy? Are you going to renovate the property? What is the goal, okay? We are the expert. We're the ones that are going out there every single day with our clients, going into different properties, writing offers on these properties, seeing what they sell for, and we're passing that information on to you so that you can be prepared. Relationships with other realtors, massively important, okay? Whenever we're submitting an offer or we're talking to a, a listing agent about their listing, we're building relationships to benefit you. And we will talk about that in a bit. The example I always use, you're going to court. Someone has accused you of something. Um, you're not gonna hire your accuser's lawyer to represent you. Why would they? They don't have your best interests at heart. Second thing, you'd also wanna know that the lawyer that you have hired has experience in exactly what you're doing, okay? And I'll tell you, we have experience. Last year, the Santa Sells Houses team alone, there's three of us on this team, three agents. We did 60 buyer transactions and more than 65% of them were one in multiple offers. So we have the experience. We know what we're doing when we're competing against other home buyers. Dedicated buyers representatives. Some agents work with both sellers and buyers. Right now, I'm a dedicated buyer representative. I'm working only with home buyers, going out there, showing them properties, writing offers, and educated them on the process. Market experience is massive, okay? I think in January, I went into 60 different houses with clients to look at them. Evaluating them, seeing how other people view them, how many offers did they get, uh, what is the sale price? That is market experience that I have to share with you, okay? Your average London agent, just as an example, does less than four buyer deals in a year. We, have, we averaged 20 per agent last year, and one of our agents does mostly listings, so we're higher than that. The SSHT buyer system. This is extremely important to understand when you're starting your home buying process. And this is a system that we go through with all of our clients that are looking to buy properties. Number one, pre-approval. You shouldn't be shopping for a home without a pre-approval and having a good idea of what you can afford. You don't go grocery shopping without knowing how much money you have in your bank account. You don't go into a house without knowing if you can afford it or not, okay? And there are different types of pre-approvals. A lot of people bank with different different uh, different banks, some of them are better than others. Mortgage brokers are different as well. We need something in writing and we need something that is well above the list price of something that we're going to look at, okay? Number two, once we have your pre-approval, buyer consultation to establish your goals. That is a very important meeting and it, honestly, it evolves over time. But like I said, I need to understand what your goals are, what you like, what you don't like. It will evolve as we go through different properties, but that's a starting point. Number three, viewing properties, getting out there quickly, starting to educate you on the process. What do you like about properties? What you don't like about properties? And then after we've gone through them, going back, what did they sell for? How many offers did they get? Did you buy it? Obviously, we know what happened then. Submitting aggressive offers. There's a difference between a winning offer and a losing offer. And I'll tell you right off the bat, if you're thinking about writing a losing offer. This morning, we had a listing and I had somebody that I showed it to. We had 21 offers on that listing. Somebody told me this morning, I would like to offer 425. I said, you're wasting your time. That house ended up selling for $650,000. They were way out to left field. That's a losing offer, okay? You're spinning your wheels the more you do that. Our goal is to get you submitting aggressive offers that have a chance to win. Of course, listen to your realtor. If you can't trust what I have to say, you don't believe what I'm saying, um, you don't rely on my advice, it's not gonna work. Okay. I think we've proven that, you know, we have the experience and the know-how to help you succeed. You need to understand that we're here to help you. Pro tip, stay educated. Um, if you follow the Santa Sells Houses team on Facebook, if you don't, you should. We do a Monday market update every Monday. 
and it's a look back at the previous week's um, statistics. We haven't missed a week of video in over 200 weeks. We're very consistent with it. And that is valuable information that you can take a look at every single week. Now, our three best strategies to win in multiple offers. This is our secret sauce that we've done over and over and over. And this is what separates us working with a client and somebody else, okay? These strategies win and they work. All right, let's get into it. Cooperate. Do not compete with the seller. You compete with other home buyers. You cooperate with the seller. You want the seller on your side. They've got 20 offers. Why would they pick yours versus somebody else? Okay. The first important thing, understand market conditions. We're an extreme seller's market. The seller has all the leverage. As the buyer, all you can do is play nice and hope they want to work with you. Your realtor should build a, re a relationship with the listing agent. Like I said, that's extremely important. And that's something that I do. A lot of the time when buyer agents are out there with their clients and a client says, I would like to submit an offer on this property. Great. Here's the paperwork. You sign it, sign the paperwork. I'll send it to the listing agent. No phone call, no text. No, did you receive this? No. Hey, what do you think of our offer? No. Hey, can we change anything? None of that. Okay. It's, it's brutal. That's something that we do is we strive very hard to make a relationship with the listing agent to get them on our side. Through that, we often learn a little bit more from the listing agent about what the seller wants to see in the offer. What could make your offer more exciting for them? Oftentimes people wanna write a letter. Sometimes it's a good idea, sometimes it's not. But that is something that we learn through that relationship, okay? You want the seller on your side, always. Forget all the rest of the buyers, compete with them. You want the seller on your side. Number two, bully offers. A bully offer, great strategy, is an offer submitted prior to the seller's preferred holdback date. They say, no, nope, no offers till next Tuesday. If we get in there early, we like the house, we might decide to make a bully offer and really give them everything that they want to avoid competition. That's the number one thing to understand with a bully offer. You're doing it to avoid competition. You don't want the rest of these people to be able to see the house. A successful bully offer contains everything that the seller wants. It's above list price, it's firm. And like I said, you're doing it to avoid competition, okay? Why would we give the seller everything they want? Well, because you think you're gonna get it in a bully offer for less than somebody else might pay five days down the road in when there's 30 offers. Sometimes it happens, okay? And it's to limit the exposure to other buyers because once that competition starts, all bets are off as to what somebody might pay. Last but not least, this is probably my favorite, an escalation clause. Uncommon, a lot of people don't know about it. They don't know how to use it properly. An escalation clause in an offer says, here's our starting price. We will beat the next best offer by $5,000 up to a max price of this, okay? This graph gives an example where there's four competing offers. Ours is the one at the end with the heart underneath it. That red portion is our starting offer. Let's say it's $300,000. That first offer had a better offer than us. They would have won. But our escalation clause kicked in and said, we'll beat that offer by $5,000 up to a max price of three fifty. dollars okay? um, It's fully legal. The important thing is that the listing agent needs to understand it and they need to be okay explaining it to their client. That's where the relationship with the listing agent really comes into play. I used this with a client in January, last month, to help them buy a property in St. Thomas. They were prepared to pay $51,000 more than we got it for. We beat the next best offer by $5,000, which like I said, was $50,000 less than they were prepared to pay for the property. It's a great tool. If it's executed well, it can save you a lot of money and guarantee that you get the house. Price is not the only thing uh, that matters in a offer. The next most important thing is likely conditions. The two most common that we would see a financing condition and a home inspection condition. Now, your pre-approval is massive for a financing condition. Keep in mind, a seller doesn't wanna see these. They want a firm offer. They don't want a maybe type of offer, which is a conditional offer, okay? In order to get your financing condition taken care of, I want your pre-approval and I wanna to talk to your mortgage broker and see what they think about the situation. They're the money expert. I rely on what they say. Hopefully you've got somebody that you can trust. If you don't, let me know because I've got amazing mortgage broker contacts that would love to work with you and earn your business.
Now, a home inspection. A lot of people are buying houses without a home inspection. What's the deal with that? First and foremost, myself, I'm a licensed independent designer under the Ontario Building Code. So when I go into a house, I know how a house is supposed to be built and I know what to look for to see if it's wrong, okay? If you have, I don't look at everything. I don't go into the attic. Sometimes we can't test everything in the house. If you have questions about a house and you need to get a home inspection, we always recommend that you do that. However, if we get in there fast enough, we might have time to get a home inspection done before offers are due. Boom. Your financing says we're good. Your home inspection is done. We just created a firm offer. Congratulations. You just beat half the people that are writing offers to begin with. Other things to remember when writing an offer, you do what you're comfortable with, okay? Assess what the property is worth to you and offer that. Even if we think somebody else is gonna offer something crazy above it, do what you're comfortable with. Price is not the only important factor. That's probably number one, then conditions, then closing date, and then sometimes inclusions, okay? Trust your realtor, I'm here for you. I'm here to educate you and put you in the best position I can. Don't get too emotional. Buying a house is an emotional process, okay? You know, we see people on TV, HGTV all the time crying because they got their dream house. Congratulations. I don't want you crying because you lost, okay? And don't get too emotional over a loss like that. Get emotional when you, when you win, but before that, we need to make rational decisions, okay? Of course, we are an essential service operating during a pandemic. We have to take certain precautions when we're working with clients, showing properties. Um, this is everything that we're doing uh, as mandated by the health unit to make sure that we are keeping everyone safe, us, buyers and sellers, okay? I talked about Lacorum Awards at the start. We are gonna give away a $50 gift card. Someone on here is gonna win 50 bucks to shop at lacorum.ca. Now, what are they? We are the exclusive real estate partners for Lacorum in London. And just by working with us to buy or sell a house, you can earn up to $1,500 credit to shop.lacorum.ca. A little bit of what we make goes to Lacorum. You get to shop for free. They have amazing, it's only local vendors. So only uh, local Canadian brands. And they have amazing categories. Like if you want to do home improvements, you want gift cards to a restaurant, you want clothes, you want home goods. It's all on the store. And they're always expanding what they're adding to the store. So like I said, just by working with the Santa Sells Houses team to buy or sell a house, you're going to get credit to shop here because a little bit of what we make goes to Lacorum, support local. We're very proud to be their partner. Last but not least, to recap, we talked about 2020. What the, what the pandemic did to the real estate market, we still had very high demand. We had dwindling supply as we got into the year, which pushed us to the extreme seller's market that we experienced in January. Going forward through 2021, we expect a lot of the same. All right, I wouldn't be surprised if the average sale price in London stays above 600K for the rest of the year, all right? Once we set that floor, it's really hard to go back. Why you should buy before spring, competition is crazy. I want you to get in before everyone else knows what they're doing. A lot of buyers out there right now are running around not knowing what they're doing. I want you to get into a house before your competition levels up, okay? Our three best strategies to win, bully offer, cooperate with the seller, escalation clause. Those three things, amazing tools. Obviously, we entered LaCorum Rewards. Contact us today. I want to get you started today, and I want you to succeed in purchasing a house. I know that it's difficult. It's a daunting task. However, it is possible to get into the real estate market today. All right. These strategies are fantastic starting points, but the education and the real world experience is what's really going to get you um, get us out there and getting get you to a position to be successful. Okay. Once again, thank you everyone so much for joining us tonight. Um, you'll have a copy of this in your email tomorrow. Any questions whatsoever, hit me up. Um, you can text, email, call anytime. But uh, thanks again for joining us tonight and uh, go Leafs go.